circus plumes, 1984 oaks, and uh, 1990. And um, then you surprised everybody by deciding to take out your license again to ride. Your first winning ride on your return was on Nicholas, which was very apt because he was trained by my mother. And also, interestingly enough, he was Bill Shoemaker's last ride in the state of Florida in his farewell tour before he came to England. Was it a great relief to you to get that first winner out of the way? Well, obviously it was. This was uh, the second day back at Chapter, and uh, this and Nicholas, you know, and it was it was in a all age, you know, race over six furlongs, you know, and uh, he, you know, he'd been a good horse all his life, and uh, he had a lot of weight that day, you know. The past halfway in this Bidston all-age stakes with Lady Tout being joined by Amiga Manor. Nicholas has been switched towards the outside for his challenge into the final quarter and at the moment none going better than Nicholas who's come right up level now with Amiga Manor as Lady Tout drops away. Then comes Farfalu, restore his last of all down to the distance and it's Nicholas being pressed by Amiga Manor. These two matching strides and the long fellow goes for his whip on Nicholas but he's got the advantage. Nicholas it is in front from Amiga Manor and racing up towards the line and it's Nicholas. The maestro is back. He's come back with it. Nicholas of Leicester Pickett from Amiga Manor. It was marvellous, really, uh, to come back, you know, as quickly as that, you know. Anyway, they named the race after me, Chip. So <laughs> <laughs> the reception you got and the press coverage and everything, it was, it was wonderful and it mm -hmm. must, have, must have really made it very much worthwhile. Oh, of course it was, you know. Then I went on to, to, to win another race that day. Uh, Eric Elden, you know, it was really worth something. Yeah. So, leading up to your comeback, did you prepare a great deal? As I recall, you didn't really do very much in order to get fit. How how could you go back to race riding like that and still be able to ride like you do? I'm lucky, really. That I'm always pretty fit. And last year. Before I didn't work all the time, and we been riding a lot of horses every morning. So I was, I was reasonably fit, and they asked me to ride in these two veteran places in the summer in July and in Ireland. And I'd promised to ride in the, the one at the Carrow from, from the winter before, because it was a commemoration 200 years of the Carrow races. It was a very successful day there, really, because the people that came, I hadn't seen a lot of them for years and years, and there was a terrific crowd that day. Sometime afterwards, Vincent said to me, you know, he, he said, you, you're always thinking about coming back to ride. And I said, do you really think so? And he said, yes, you know, you, you said you, you know, you're fit and everything. So, uh, I didn't think any more about it. And uh, then coming towards the end of September time, I thought, well, you know, why not? You know, uh, we didn't have too many horses here, so I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And uh, and it wasn't until about the 18th of October, which was a bit too late, really, uh, that I did come back, you know. But, uh, you know, as it turned out, it's been great fun. Was there any stage leading up to your comeback that you were ever worried or how were in a, any doubt of your ability to ride in races again. I mean, you retired in 1985, a legend, you know. Were you ever worried that maybe you weren't capable of performing the way that you did before? Well, uh, obviously, uh, you know, one couldn't really tell till, till you rode in a race, but, uh, you know, I, I didn't worry about it. Um, and, you know, it, it all came back so quickly, uh, you know, and it was marvellous really how fit I was. Well, I think you proved to, to everybody beyond any shadow of a doubt in uh, Belmont Park when you rode Royal Academy for Vincent O'Brien to win the Breeders' Cup. And it wasn't always certain that you were going to ride the horse. In fact, there was no question that you were, because obviously John Reed being the stable jockey at the time, but then, of course, on Arc Weekend, he had that fall off uh, Whippet, and he was unable to ride Royal Academy. How did Vincent approach you, or did you approach him for the ride on Royal Academy? Well, it's, um, 
The Royal Academy was originally going to, they were going to run at Newmarket, which was, I think, a week before the Breeders' Cup. So somebody else had been booked, I think, to ride him then. Anyway, Vincent changed his mind because the horse was going so well at home and decided to take him to America. So in the week before the Breeders' Cup, he asked me to come over and ride four horses at the car. I went over there and, and all these horses were won. Unbelievable, really. Anyway, Royal Academy, we had uh, about four owners. They were all pulling different ways, different jockeys. So nobody knew who was going to ride him. <laughs> anyway, eventually, near the time, Benton said, you ride yours. And, and that was it, you know. And uh, I went over there about two days before the race. You know, and uh, I rode him. In the morning, the day before the race, was the first time I'd ever sat on him. What was his temperament like? Well, he was a lot like Nijinsky. He was a big horse and uh, you know, he just used to get on his toes a bit, you know. When the stalls opened, he was a little bit slow, which he had been most of his life, you know. And, and he was behind, which wasn't a bad thing, really, because they weren't fast. And you know, after halfway, you know, it, able to pick him up and get into a good position. He's now fifth. Mark of distinction is taken under a hard hold. He was steadied in behind Lady Winner. On the outside, beginning to move up now. That's it's all Greek to me. He's about six lengths off the lead. Mark of distinction is now pinned down on the inside. Colway rally with clear running moving up. Long shot great. Normandy's about nine lengths off the lead. Royal Academy with clear running on the far outside. And down inside, who's to pay? Nine lengths from the pacemakers. Priolo is second to last. Jalajo trails the field. Expensive decision. And Shotgun Scott, those two moving together. The quarter went in a sharp 22 and three fifth seconds as the field enters the far turn. A grueling half mile here of 45 and four. And it's expensive decision now who shakes loose from Shotgun Scott. Go Dutch. It's all Greek to me is now coming with his sharp rally on the outside. Steinland has now faded to fifth. On the outside, Mark of Distinction has clear running now, and here comes Mark of Distinction with his run for the lead. Lady Winner is in behind a phalanx of horses with nowhere to go. Royal Academy and Lester Pickett are six lengths off the lead, but they're launching their rally now as they come down to the final furlong. It's all Greek to me as a short lead, expensive decision, battling back, Mark of Distinction. Royal Academy is thundering down the center of the turf course, and Steinland is fifth. They're coming down to the finish. Lester Pickett flailing away at Royal Academy. It's all Greek to me toward the inside here's the wire head bobbing finish royal academy does it and the living legend out of retirement 54 year old lester piggott pulls off the upset here anyone who was at the 1990 breeders cup has said that this was just the most remarkable day's racing ever witnessed with just one ride lester revived all the memories of those great finishes and this one needed lester at his very best just before we straightened out, I was going terribly well. I think I was following Mark of Distinction. Something happened to the horse, whether he, he put his foot in a hole or whatever, he lost all his momentum. Like he'd just been shot or something. Anyway, it took him another 50 yards to pick up again. And then I had to really ride him hard from then, from then onward to the finish. But he responded. I always thought I was just going to get up in the straight. I stuck on well at the finish. But it was unbelievable, really. But it must have uh, it must have been very special to you, the oh, old team back together, having that big win, the biggest since you made your comeback. Yes, and it was an unbelievable day, really. You know, it meant so much for everybody, really. And how long can you see yourself riding for? Have you any idea? Well, I don't know. <laughs> um, next year, anyway. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll ride as long as I, I feel good and. Uh, I feel terrific at the moment. People have been retiring Lester for the past 20 years, and he'll probably disappoint them for a few more. Whatever else he may have done during his career, Lester's thrilled race goers literally around the world. To come back at his age in a profession that demands deprivation and peak fitness is nothing short of extraordinary. But then, that's the nature of the man. 
promised to retire towards the end of 1985. It was at Nottingham Racecourse, and he had a winner on his final day. I remember it well. I was there. He rode a horse called Full Choke for John Dunlop, beating a young Richard Fox into second place. What would we do without Leicester? Which horses would we bet on without Lester Piggott? Well, he was to become a trainer, but that didn't last long because, unfortunately, from his point of view, the taxman caught up with him and he was to spend a year in prison. He emerged relatively unscathed, but, of course, he was stripped of his OBE. But then, at the age of 54, Lester stunned the racing world when he announced he was renewing his jockey's license. He was going to start riding again at the age of 54. So that famous Lester Piggott crouch style would be seen all over Britain's race courses. It was a different Lester who came back. He was now more relaxed. He was more smiling as well, I can tell you that. And he was trying to beat that record of 29 classic winners. Could he get another? Well, at the start of the 1992 season, Robert Sangster's chestnut colt, Rodrigo de Triano, was widely tipped for classic glories. But he ran very disappointingly at Newbury in the Greenham, where he finished fourth, ridden by Willie Carson. However, for the Guineas, Willie was claimed to ride for Sheikh Hamdan. Sir Robert Sangster had no hesitation in turning to his old friend to partner his colt at Newmarket. Well, as they left the stalls, Lester dropped Rodrigo out stone last of the 16 runners. Surely a fatal move in a fast-run classic. But how many times has he done that before and still been in the right place when it really matters? Rodrigo wasn't too fast away either. Early on, River falls towards the outside of Pursuit of Love with Thurios the inside. Lucky Lindy is close up. Swing Low is dashing up on the outside with Dillon very prominent as well. Then the grey wild Rufo. Arctic Tracker is making up the lost ground and then in midfield comes Mutarum from Steinbeck, Tertian towards the outside, then Cardoon, Al Nasser Al Washik, well back at the moment, then Silver Wisp towards the rear at this stage, Abadir, and then Rodrigo Di Triano. They've gone a couple of furlongs and it's River Falls right up with the pace with Swinglow on the outside, Pursuit of Love, very prominent, then Thurius, and then close up is Dillamartic Tracker towards the outside, and then Tertian. Four and a half furlongs left to go in the Guineas, over to the grandstand. And the two groups now starting to join forces as we see Pursuit of Love shaken up in the centre. River Falls with the hoop sleeves on the left. Dillam just behind them with Wild Rufo the Grey. Thurios in the firing line as well from Tertian. Lucky Lindy behind them. Cardoon on the stands rail. Steinbeck in behind them. Further back in the field in Arctic Tracker. They run down now towards the uh, three furlong marker. And up front it's Pursuit of Love battling it out in company with Thurios. Just behind them is Tertian. Rodrigo Di Triano is being produced now from Swing Low. Further back is Silver Wisp. Al Nazar Al Washik looking for a way through from Lucky Lindy. They run down now with a furlong and a half to go. Pursuit of Love grabbed now by Rodrigo Di Triano on the far side. Rodrigo swept to the lead with Leicester from Pursuit of Love. Lucky Lindy staying on well on the stands rail, followed then by Silver Wisp. Rodrigo, though, two in front. Lucky Lindy finishing fast, but Rodrigo gives Leicester his 30th classic win. Second is Lucky Lindy, Pursuit of Love third, and Silver Wisp fourth. Leicester received yet another hero's welcome from the devoted Newmarket faithful. And that season, he went on to win a total of eight Group 1 races. An unbelievable achievement by a man in his 58th year. We leave you, though, with tributes from many of those who knew him well throughout a career that spanned five decades, starting with the voice of racing, Sir Peter O'Sullivan. As a long-time observer of the international racing scene and an unashamed hero worshipper, I've always avoided comparisons whenever possible. But I have to say, with firm conviction, you'll never see a greater jockey than Lester Keith Pickett. If you notice, you never see him crowding horse. He's never sat over the top of horse. He always just sat at the back. His backside's in the air, he arches his back. But he's never laid over the top of the ears. You know? He allows the horse to race. He really is a great horseman. And I think probably his greatest asset is probably his, his great racing brain. He's uh, always been able to have the knack of picking the right horse, which is a great advantage. And uh, he's obviously a very good judge at it. And he undoubtedly was a great judge of pace. Uh, he kept horses wonderfully well balanced. Uh, and he was just a sort of great natural jockey. I think he'll always be remembered because he's all he's a tremendous record and he's, you know, and, and the amount of classics he's won and all the other races. Esther will never change. You know, he always 
rides how he thinks it should be ridden. If it's not good enough, well, it doesn't work. I think all his performances in the Derby of Leicester have been tremendous. You know, he he always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, he's a great judge of a classic horse. He was always looking round him in races, and he knew next time exactly what the opposition would be like. He was a marvellous judge of form. Well, um, simply uh, that he's a genius. <laughs>